Hi there. I want to talk to you in this brief clip about the idea of competing entity relationship diagram standards or conventions. And the reason I want to talk to you about this is because uh, some of you uh, at this point have, have utilized different standards and I've told you no, no. And I wanted to spend a little bit of time investigating why that is because you might say, well, you know, I looked online and, and or this is used in my organization. It seems completely credible. It has many of the same pieces that we have in this class. They're just put together differently. So what's the big deal? And I think that's an excellent question that we should investigate a little bit. So there's a joke in IT and probably in other disciplines. The great thing about standards is that there's so many of them to choose from among. And the reason that is funny, in theory, you may not find it hilarious, is the whole idea of standardization is everybody benefits from doing something exactly the same way. And so the funny bit is when you have multiple standards from cho to choose from among, then everybody isn't doing it the same way. Many people are doing it entirely different ways, and you have kind of a Tower of Babel problem where people who have embraced different standards cannot talk readily to one another. And so, you know, if we had two or three times as long together, we would spend some time talking about the most popular standards and how to translate or convert, excuse me, one into the other. Uh, we won't do much of that, but I want to go through some of them and talk a little bit about them. Of course, here's ours, right? M very familiar to, to you by this point. We've got a look across convention for our cardinality. We say, let me let me get my uh, stylus going here. We say, in terms of assessing the employee's cardinality, we represent represent that across the relationship, which you might say is completely crazy, because why would you put it over here if it actually relates to the employee? But the reason for that is because of how it lends reading. Given a given employee can be involved in or what we whatever we would call the name of this relationship at most one department. So it reads very nicely left to right and it reads very nicely in the passive voice right to left. A given department can have involved in it at most many employees. That's why we use the look across convention. For participation, on the other hand, we use look here, and we say a given department must participate in the having enrolled in employees. So you can't have, a, because this line is double, you can't have a department without employees. However, alternately, because this line is single, we can have an employee that does not participate in the belonging to a department. So there can be an employee with zero departments. There cannot be a department with zero employees. And all that should be fairly familiar. So what about some of these other conventions? Well, let's take a look at them. Actually, before we do that really quickly, it's worth mentioning that this convention that we use is called, called the El Masre and Nevate convention. And El Masre and Nevate are textbooks, textbook authors, and uh, they have a really great textbook, but it is in my estimate, and it's the one I used when I was learning database, but it's, it's too hard for undergraduate. It's more appropriate for graduate tech, so we don't use that in our class, and consider yourself lucky because it's pretty technical and it's pretty hard. But they have a great standard, and there are advantage of, advantages of it. So let's do a compare and contrast. Okay. So here is a competitor convention. Okay, this one is known as, this is my second favorite, and it's known as IE or crow's feet. And the look of the diagram is somewhat similar, but we can see the details of cardinality and participation are represented in an entirely different way. I think this one makes a lot of sense as well, but it's not as powerful as the one that we use when you get quite advanced when you start representing ternary relationships, which some of you have decided to represent in your projects, uh, things don't work nearly as powerfully or as effectively with the IE or crow's feet convention, but it makes a lot of sense. A given employee 
can work can work for from zero, hence that zero there, to at most one departments. Oh, that's compact, that makes sense, that's useful. A given department can be worked for by at least, at a minimum one, and up to many, because of this little three crow foot thing, employees. So a department can have between one and many employees, and an employee can have between zero and one departments. Nice logic, not as powerful. Uh, let's look at one other that you may see from time to time. Okay, this one, I can't remember the name of this one, it's not terribly important, but it's sort of a hybrid of the two above. It looks a lot like our convention here, but it represents things differently. And it's got the pair sort of feel, you know, from zero to one, from one to many over here, how they're pairing things. But <laughs> to, just to show you, not like you need to remember these, uh, you should be familiar with this one because it's quite common in practice and you may run up against it on the job or on the internet or whatever. But just to show you the potential for confusion, this one has a look across convention. And so you can have an employee working for many, you can have an employee working for at most one departments, potentially zero departments, but that information is represented on this side of the equation where that is th this side of the equation where the zero and one in the previous example was represented over here. And try not to pay too much attention to this because I don't want to confuse, confuse you away from the standard that we're using, but to show you that this means one to many and this means zero or one in this diagram but it's represented in a different place on this diagram. So trying to keep all these straight can drive you nuts. Here's the bottom line for us and in general. You need to have a standard for yourself and your organization. You may not get to determine what that standard is, but the standard is necessary to assure that everybody means the same thing by representing information in the same way. If you have this crazy crossing wires situation, you may represent something and somebody says, oh yes, I know exactly what you're saying. And it could mean exactly the opposite, literally exactly the opposite of what you are trying to communicate. That is a recipe for disaster. So what I have and will continue to ask is that you embrace our standard because we need to make one standard stick and run with it if we're to hope to learn anything because trying to deal with multiple standards is more than I can handle and more than I would ever expect anyone else to handle. Um, final word, our standard is very elegant, it's very powerful, it is probably not the most common standard but I think there are advantages and not least of which is it and it is an n ary standard n dash a r y which enables us to let me write that down this is n ary which means we represent relationships physically on the diagram which enables us to represent ternary and n ary relationships which are very common in modeling we don't cover them in much detail but is extremely handy and i just like it best and there you have it some justification and some insight around varying standards and our standard in entity relationship diagramming study hard and i will see you online